saying I'm Michael. I'm the owner and founder of Loudwater Outfitters. Uh, we specialize in missing persons, cold cases. We've helped people all across the country. Uh, and you know kind of what we're about there. I'll help you out in any way we can. But without me taking up all your time, I appreciate you being on here. And I'm going to turn it over to you. Just kind of tell us your story. So if you would, just introduce yourself and uh, walk us through everything. Okay. Well, I'm Christy Kennedy. I'm Brenda Lambert's sister. Um, we last seen her July 26, 1992. It was around 8 to 9 p.m., and uh, it was after her son's first birthday party. Um, that was the last time we seen her. Nothing was taken. Uh, everything. I mean, it's just like she vanished in the thin air. Nothing. And, uh, you know, we're here 30, almost 31 years later, and we're still looking for her. Um, she had a rocky marriage the last few months uh, that, you know, before she disappeared. Um, her husband was cheating on her with her first cousin. Her first cousin did move in a week after Brenda disappeared. And it's pretty much history from, from right there. It's, it, it's been a lot of trouble, a lot of just everything. I mean, just trying to get anything solid to go on to actually find her body. It, it's just, been, we have nothing, honestly. I got you. So there has been two, there was a documentary about, um, and I don't want to butcher the names, but it was Mis Mysterious West Virginia, correct? Was yes. the YouTuber. And then, uh -huh. and then Cold Justice, um, the television series actually aired a special on this as well, correct? Yes. All right. From that, um, what, what all information were they able to obtain? Or was there anything new that y'all have been able to figure out from that? Uh, uh, that kind of correlates with what y'all originally suspected. I guess, I guess my biggest thing is, so from the time that she went missing up until now, so you did say that's been, what, 30 years? Yes, almost 31. Okay, so in almost 31 years. Just kind of walk it through what they've come up with to this point, if anything. Um, well, naturally, the, the spouse is the number one suspect. Um. He, I guess he's the only suspect, really. But, you know, there's, like I said, there's no proof. There's, that's why there's, you know, there's nothing been done yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I do, I do have faith in our, in Mercer County Sheriff's Department. You know, we have some pretty good guys there. Um, but it, it's just pretty much what we lack is physical evidence. We yeah. have no DNA evidence. Um, there's nothing solid. You know, uh, I think one thing that we have discovered, uh, probably the most important thing is the location of her body. And that it would be on the husband's family's property. So, um, so y'all do, it, it is believed to know where the, the remains are located at? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cause see, so as far as going through and seeing that, I didn't. I, I didn't see anything about that. I did see somebody comment when I watched that documentary, though, that a warrant or a search warrant had been drawn up, just had never been executed. Was that correct? Mm, uh, well, the um, Steve Spingola and Matt Hatfield uh, on the show, they, you know, they did obtain permission to go and look around mm -hmm. the property. So they have been on there. Okay. Once they went on to the property, what what led them to believe? I mean, other than obviously, you know, that gut feeling most of the mm -hmm. time, nine times out of 10 is going to be correct. Well, I'd say maybe 99 times out of a hundred, whatever, but how, uh, what, once they got on there, what led them to believe that that was, they were in the right place? Um, I think that it's what they have been told that mm -hmm. led them there. And it has been, you know, repeated by a lot of people, that that is where she has been buried. Okay. And it's, I mean, this is something we've heard since the get go. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom and dad both bought plots of land up there close to that area. And they're just pretty much across the road and over the hill, buried mm -hmm. away from where Brenda is supposed to be, where her body is supposedly buried. So they believed it enough to actually be buried that close just to be close to her when they died. So okay. this is a, this has been a, the area for the entire time. So it, it's not like something newly discovered, mm -hmm. yeah. but there's just more proof of it now. 
Okay. Have they, do you know if any, uh, as far as going back on the property, do they use any kind of like ground penetrating radar or cadaver dogs, anything of that nature? No, I don't think they can. Uh, that is the part that they cannot obtain. Okay. Uh, they can't get that type of search warrant for it. Okay. All right. Uh, so, and I'll come back to that here in just a second, but the, there was another young man at a, it was Mercer County that was missing. Uh, his yeah, it was, uh, that was Brenda's friend. Um, there was a lot of mix ups about them. I'm not even sure how it got started. They were boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know there was a little bit of flirting going on. Yes. Um, because uh, he worked at Burger King and we would go through the drive through and, you know, I could just see, you know, he had a crush on Brenda and I believe she was flattered, you know, uh, about it. But um, as far as actual boyfriend and girlfriend, I don't believe that part of it. Um, as far as the connection, I, I mean, I'm standing right in the middle. You know, you've got your group that doesn't believe it. And then you have us who is right in the middle. And then you have those who definitely believe there's connection, which it, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, there possibly could be. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as his case goes too, has there been any kind of developments as far as where they believe he may be? Is it, I mean, is it possible he's living? Because I, and I reference back to that too. Again, all of this is going off of that mysterious West Virginia documentary I watched yeah. that they did, which was really in depth. Um, looked like it was really well put together. That there was something about the birthday announcements on there. There was a little girl that kept getting birthday announcements posted in the yeah. paper. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about Mark's story because apparently mm -hmm. I'm not Ken. I'm just, I, I've tried to. Yes. Uh, you know, include him because, you know, like I said, I, I watched um, when the case was, Daryl Bailey had the case and mm -hmm. in 1994, he kind of got evidence that they were seen together prior to their disappearances. Okay. So that, you know, that happened in 94, his mom and my mom, they got together and talked. And from that moment on, I, you know, I figured when I graduated and started my life that I was going to look for both of them. So that's why, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to pretty much, but, um, I, I don't believe Mark is alive either. Okay. Um, there is, you know, different, I guess, different stories about what happened to him, mm -hmm. but there's no proof. Just like with Brenda, you know, there's not even a hair <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. So, so and that was my question too. So as far as from the house, cause the last time she was seen was at the birthday party. Is that, is that yes. correct? Correct. And there was nothing, there's no, dna evidence that's ever been obtained there's no because it was it was talking about how the outfit that she was wearing had been left behind as well like she had changed yes, yes. And, there was, and there was just nothing after that no i mean we don't even know what she was wearing mm -hmm. when she disappeared it, it's just it's all a mystery yeah because it was ta also talking about how she would never go anywhere without her vehicle right so but no, then, no. And now, then, Brenda had a, I'm the same way. Like, I, I won't go anywhere. I won't ride with people. Mm -hmm. I have to take my own vehicle. You know, it's just one of those things I can come and go when I want. Brenda was the same way. Yeah, so that right there automatically kind of makes you start wondering. Well, it's not really wondering. It's almost, again, just through working previous cases, both through the Loudwire stuff and law enforcement. If there's no signs of struggle, more than likely, it would lead you to believe that it was somebody was involved that she knew or had that trusted um that you know there's no no kind of no signs of force entry into the premises that she was on there was no signs of struggle or anything really at the end of the day it just looks like she changed clothes and basically vanished into thin air yeah just into thin air and, and you know it's pretty much the same thing with mark just poop just gone you know and never to be seen again and i don't i mean that's there's not many occurrences where people just absolutely leave their lives their mm -hmm. family their kids, you know, and they now they both have grandkids and, you know, they haven't showed up. Their mothers have passed on. They've not showed up. It's, you know, I mean, it's just one of those common sense things. You don't you don't need proof to know when someone has died. Yeah. And, and it also, you know, this was in <laughs> mid nineties. This is what, 94 this took place? Uh, Mark, this year, 93. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, you know, you got early 90s up until now. I mean, it's extremely hard. And the few cases that, you know, I, I've looked into to where people have started a completely new life, um, 
it's a lot harder than what people try to make it out to be, especially in today's day and age. If somebody was out there, you know, they, they mess up. Everything's being monitored. Uh, everything, you know, you got cameras up everywhere. Somebody's going to slip up eventually. So what, so I guess, what do you think in your opinion has been the biggest hurdle as far as getting the closure on that, getting the, you know, getting it from, okay, this is what we think to happen to proving or getting to the point where it's like, Hey, you know, do you, is it something you think obviously at least one other person is going to know, but do you think it's something that numerous other people are going to know? It's just a matter of nobody's come forward. I think that a lot of people know what happened to both of them, but no one likes to talk um, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. I don't know if they're scared or, or whatever, but they, um, they just don't talk about it. You know, uh, what? They, I, I'm kind of disappointed in, Really, in I mean, a community should should care that they have missing persons, and you know, no one has ever seen them again, and possibly, you know, in their mind, in my mind, they're murdered. They were murdered, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I tell everybody. And I don't know. I, I just don't. To me, it's it's something to be alarmed about. In you know, for me, living here. Yeah. If people were disappearing and never being found and and no one's being charged, then they're still out there around everybody else too. It's crazy. Yeah, because I mean, obviously missing persons, cold cases, it's a huge issue all around the country. But um, for me, like I said, so being from South Carolina, there's a ton of missing people here that just seem to vanish. North Carolina is the same way. But then once you get into that, uh, like I said, the la latest where we actually went out a good little distance from where we're at was we went to Pittsburgh went to Ohio and we went to West Virginia right there in that little triangle. And there mm -hmm. is just an unbelievable amount of people dating back. You know, you've got some more recent ones, but if you look back 30 years to now, I mean, it just seems like those areas within themselves, it's just the numbers of people that are missing with just zero explanation of it. I mean, it's just huge. I mean, what other yeah. than a, a huge driving factor behind that's number one, going to be people that aren't saying anything, you know, cause they, I mean that unfortunately, and some people just don't understand that, there is certain aspects that, that, well, I understand that it is, too. You know? but I just I don't yeah. agree with it it doesn't make it right um, which we never thought that it was going to happen to us and we were the unsolved mysteries you know the first uh the first disappearance and murder I've ever heard of was Adam Walsh mm -hmm. and I was like five you know my mom was a big crime buff type person but I mean it never occurred to us that it could happen to us so I kind of understand you know um the not getting it part, you know, not unless you've really been there. Um, now, something else about Mark is um, he apparently, and like I said, I don't have proof of really nothing. I can just go by what people have said over the years. Mm -hmm. He apparently asked about Brenda at the bar, asked what happened to her, where she was at. He got beat up and thrown out. And that was the last time anybody had seen him. Mm -hmm. Do you take that and that they were friends and that they disappeared five months apart, a mile apart? I mean, you know, I mean, that's just like Daryl Bailey said. He he said that he would have to have proof that they wasn't connected. And I'm, I'm kind of the same way, but, you know. Yeah, it's, it's really it's really convenient and not so much, you know, it's not a coincidence, especially in an area like that. Because they said that, what, the population in that area is only, what, maybe 2,100, 2,400? Yeah, well, there's not like a whole lot of us here, you yes. know. So, and I'm assuming everybody knows everybody, right? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. It's a small town, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that's a long time. So, let me ask, when, um, well, so once that documentary came out, and then once Cold Justice came in, what was the overall, I guess, attitude? Like, so when people see some of these, or when people see these videos or these interviews, sometimes they get released, people immediately start talking, right? Uh, people start sending me in stuff. People start getting nervous. People start acting different. When those two came out pretty much within a short time frame of each other, what what was the overall response to that? I think that a lot of people were kind of uh, have never heard of Brenda or Mark. And so mm -hmm. they're, one of the biggest um, things that we've noticed is how many people have said, oh, I didn't know that. And they've lived here all their lives. Yeah. No, I mean, it has been ran in the paper over and over and over. And I mean, I just can't stress the amount of work that we've put into trying to get, 
you know, their names out there and to get people to be more aware of what's going on around them. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know how they don't, how there are so many who still don't know. Yeah, correct. And, it's, and that's the, that's the one thing that I like about, or the idea behind me utilizing social media to do this is just because there's so many people that are on it, right? There's people mm-hmm. from all over the world that watch these interviews. There's people from all over the world that get invested in these things. And there's so many different families at this point that I've worked with that uh, not only are looking for answers for their case, but now it's become like this community where everybody supports each other. So if they have connections or they know a person that specializes in this, or they know somebody that does this. And really at the end of the day, the biggest thing that I'm proud of with it is how they support each other to get through it. Right. Because um, obviously the loved one that's missing, that's who everybody's trying to find. But a lot of times people don't think about what's happened to the ones that have been left behind from that. Right. It is a hard, hard life to live. And uh, I think that's, uh, well, Kenny from the Aware Foundation, he has really helped out so many of us Mm -hmm. uh, to get to know each other. And I'm I'm very thankful for that because I don't feel so alone in it. Yeah. Uh, And, and I'm probably one of the, um, I'm probably one of the few that's, been uh, looking for my family for so long so I'm hoping I can help the other ones out you know yeah and and it will and because there'll be like I said the other families that I've worked with they'll they'll watch this and then they're going to reach out to you right so then there's just it becomes like this domino effect where everybody's working together and like you said the Ware Foundation all these other organizations that do similar things or more in depth uh, things similar to what I do, or maybe, you know, is something as simple as posting a flyer, like my hat goes off to all of them. Right. So it's not something that I'm like, Oh, well, I did this. Nobody else is doing it. I could care less. Like the recognition, all that other stuff that matter to me, the, the fact that people are really getting answers that they've not gotten for, you know, some of them 50 years, some of them two months, some of them two weeks, 24 oh, hours yeah. is too long to go without having any kind of answers like that. So there's definitely a lot that goes behind it. But again, you, you do have to stop and think for yourself too. Like uh, it's it not, only, you, you, really, can't, you can't even really grieve it, you know, like you hadn't really yeah, been able to process um, anything. You're, uh, it's just like us. We're just kind of frozen and there's no, there's no in or out. You're mm-hmm. just right there, you know, um, until you actually find your person. And, and then I think that's when the really tough part will come along. Uh, you know, it, it's the realization because uh, no matter how much I'll say that I need the proof that I don't need proof that Brenda is deceased, it's mm-hmm. still going to take on a whole new meaning if and when we find her body. So, you know, you know, uh, we've we have done so much over the years that I've literally sat and studied like, you know, bodies decomposing in in different environments and you know different ways whether they are wrapped in a tarp or buried in concrete or or just buried in the dirt. Um, mm-hmm. That's the kind of stuff that I've, you know, I've done over the years to kind of be self-taught about what I'm looking for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so as far as, let me ask you this, something that I do like to ask is, so obviously everybody or for you and the people that will see this, that they'll understand like, well, okay, well, Brenda's missing. Brenda, Brenda, unfortunately is possibly if not more than likely a victim of homicide or foul play of some sort, what is a, what's some, what's some good things that paint a picture, right? Um, what it be able to, if you've never met anybody a day in your life and you wanted to describe Brenda, how would, how would you describe her? Um, she was, uh, we always say that she was childlike, but it, it's not her, um, IQ or anything is so a Brenda was fun. Mm-hmm. She would, I mean, we were still playing hide and seek and having water fights and, and stuff like that. She, um, she was, she wasn't going to grow old. She mm-hmm. liked to prank, you know, a lot. Um, and, but the one thing I'd really do want to stress is as young as Brenda was, and, you know, she, she was very playful and fun. She was a wonderful mom and she was absolutely in love with her two kids. She was really looking forward to her daughter starting school that fall. She had picked out cute little outfits for her and matching hair bows and, and all that stuff. So it's, she's just not going to poof and leave, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but Brenda was, she was the fun one. Yeah. She was the life of the party. If there was something funny, it was going to happen. You know, it was going to come from her end. Yeah. 
Well, that's, that's all. And, you know, and that's the sad or one of the, I mean, it's all sad, but that's one of the sad things that really kind of bothers me about that, especially when there's children involved or that, you know, these victims or these loved ones that went missing have children involved. You know, like how do you, for the people that were involved or if however many were involved in all of this and they know this or if they're still alive and they're dealing with it or if they, you know, maybe some took it to their grave if they've already passed. But how, I just don't know how you go through life knowing that you took uh, somebody away from her daughter suffered quite a bit. Um, she would call me and my other sisters and she would be crying so uncontrollably uh, wanting her mom that she could barely catch her breath. So she never forgot her mama uh, from five and on up, you know, up until she passed away, um, almost, you know, a little over three years ago. She never forgot her mom. Mm -hmm. And she was always just longing for her mom. Um, so, I mean... I know she, from what she has told me, you know, it, she had a really hard time with it. Uh, you know, and then, you know, she was told that she, that her mom just didn't want her anymore. And I think that that was, that was probably something that bothered her. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. if, if somebody was watching this right now and they have knowledge of what took place, and they just, for all these years, they've not said anything. What What is it that you would like to get across to that person? Because you just never, I mean, you never truly know. I mean, I know it'll spread like wildfire. I know people are going to watch this. But to somebody that's sitting out there right now that's watching this, and you have the opportunity to tell them anything, and whatever that may be, what, what would that be? I mean, I, I, and I express this a lot. Um, it can always be them and their family or their loved ones that this happens to, and they would want someone to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, they're, I mean, honestly, if they know and they just let an entire family sit in the misery that we have set in, and you know, this wasn't, it, it didn't just kill Brenda. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took my mom out of here too. Um, you know, she, she ended up eat up with cancer from head to toe in three and a half years. She died. And, you know, we took her to Duke University and, and they said that the trauma from losing Brenda the way that she's lost her has caused, ever, caused it all. So, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know if people believe in God or what their stance is, but, you know, some people do believe in the afterlife and there's, you've got to set things right with people. And I believe in karma too. So, I, I mean, really, I have begged so much for people to tell us the truth. Mm -hmm that I, and I just don't see it ever happening honestly I can sit and talk until I'm blue in the face and the people who know are not going to say nothing yeah and th and that does right so I mean I'm understanding I'm neutral about all these things but when I hear that kind of stuff it just it it irks me so bad that people can just be that disgusting right like you're just that weak-minded like you yeah. think you think you're being tough or you think you're doing something good by holding on to this and not because, you know, maybe you're scared of the way somebody's going to react or you're going to get upset about something, but you're not. I mean, well, no, and I mean, if you can sit and, and watch Brenda's kids or, you know, her daughter, because her son really, you know, he's just one. He didn't really have a bond, you know. Um, you can sit and watch her suffer all these years like that and, and not ever tell her the truth that her mom loved her and did not leave her. And I mean, I just, there's no hope for us no. ever finding out anything either. No, not at all. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I and mean, then, like I said, I watched, you watched the, doc, or I watched the documentary. I've spoken with you. Um, and, but it's just the same thing. It's always the same thing over and over again. There's just no reason this should be drawn out this long. There's no reason that you or any other family member should ever have to wonder what happened. <laughs> I've seen cases, uh, I'm just looking at one the other day where uh, a woman has been missing for 45 years that was on another Code Justice episode. And her um, her kids suffered um, all their lives too, you know, thinking that their mother left them. And, you know, that kind of stuff right there when there's kids involved, it hurts enough because, you know, Brenda was, Brenda and her husband were like a second set of parents to me, you know. So, uh, it, you know, this is a pretty big impact uh on my own personal life too but um i could just get and imagine actually it being my own mother 
mm-hmm. or my, uh, my father too, you know, it was just all this, just my whole life, just surrounded by my mom and dad and everything that's supposed to have been going on between them, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, it also shows a lot about your character though. It also shows a lot about the, uh, the dedication determination that you have as a person and the other ones that are surrounded or her other uh, family members as well, because nobody stopped. Right. And unfortunately you do see that after a certain amount of time, um, people just stop talking about her. People just kind of let it go to the wayside. So I, I definitely salute you and uh, tons of respect to all of y'all involved with that. Cause it is a hard thing to do. Well, I mean, we do take our breaks uh, and it's, it's natural. A lot of uh, people with missing family members, they, they feel bad when they have to step back and take a breather, but it's really necessary for your mental health to step back because it's just like plunging deeper and deeper and deeper into this darkness. And it's just so hard to get yourself out of, but you need to take those mental breaks. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I know you've, you've talked about it. There's tons of information out there and everything else, but like I said, so the main purpose behind, and I greatly appreciate you coming on here to do this because I know people are going to watch, people are going to share it. And my hope is that somebody does get a hold of it, that sees it, that's had the information this long. And <laughs> You know, I but, hope so. I mean, I hope they, you know, they'll contact Matt Hatfield and and tell him what he needs to know to put an end to all this for Brenda and Mark, you know, because Mark's family is suffering too. Absolutely. Well, is there, before we get off here, I guess, is there anything else, any kind of closing message that you want to send out there to anybody, anybody that I, you want to give a shout out to as far as people you've worked with in the past or anything like that? Um. Uh, well, I think they all know I, I like him, you know, of course, you know, uh, Sean from Mysterious West Virginia and all of Code Justice, they were a ball, you know, mm-hmm. they were fun. Uh, the Aware Foundation, the Doe Network, which is, it, it, they're wonderful. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Doe Network, but yes, it, okay, well, that's, sorry, <laughs> uh, that's one place I like to visit a lot and um, I like to, you know, go through the identifieds and stuff, but um, that's, I mean, there's just, and I have a lot of friends and family that that's just mm-hmm. constantly supporting me and, and sharing and, um, and now you, so, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm sharing your stuff too. And hopefully you'll get up there where you need to be, because, you know, cause you're just one of those people that we need. Yeah. You know, you are, you're one of those people that we need to have our backs. Yeah. Well, and that's too, a lot of people, I get that question a lot. Well, first of all, I appreciate you saying that. And definitely mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Every one of those groups and individuals that you named off that you worked with, because it is, a, it, it is something that is needed. And that's why I started it was because you get so many different things, right? So there's been people that have said, well, okay, well, my story's going to get out. My story's going to do this story's going to do that. And then once, you know, it goes through media the type of things, and then it gets watered down a little bit. I'm not saying this happened to you. I'm just using this as an example. And then once it comes out, it's not even a fraction of what the actual story is. And then people are like, yeah. oh, okay. you know, so that, and that's why I do this. Number one, it lets the families get those stories out. Then other families can see that. Um, and then they, you know, they can start to work together or people that know something, they see it and they're like, oh God. And then hopefully, right there, even though it's been 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you know, they, uh, they see it and then they just start worrying about it. And then you go from there and people start well, talking. You, I mean, you, you do get watered down. I mean, it does, it gets watered down. And, and after so long, when you don't have new information to provide, you know, it, you know, people just start falling off the bandwagon. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. And then you find out something new and they all jump back on and then you'll have, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's just yeah. back and forth like it. It's really hard for, for missing persons and their families. It really is. Yep. Yeah. But again, like I said, so that's a good thing about this. It'll be out there forever. You don't, I don't, I don't do anything. That's why I work directly with family members because once mm-hmm. that comes out, that's the story that needs to be out there, right? So, yeah. um, is there anything that you could think of um, that I may be able to help you out with that you would um, need assistance from us? Any questions? Anything like that? Uh, not at the moment. Um, I still have a few things. I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff that we just can't talk about, and it's like. <laughs> I mean, a whole lot of stuff. And Brenda's Mm -hmm. style is. Oh, yeah. Um, But um, she was declared dead last year by the Mercer County Commission on September 13th. So, you know, uh, after an investigation and nothing has ever been used, she's I finally had her declared dead 
So that that's important for people to know uh, to do for their missing persons. You know, most people can do that after seven years. It's important to know that. Um, but no, not at the moment. I'm just kind of blank. It, it's just like it's just like you said. You're just saying the same thing. Mm, no. No, over and over. So I'm tr- I'm trying to give you a little bit different information. I've got so much stuff wrote down here, but um, no, and that's fine too. And like I said, I fully respect it. I'm not asking you to give out anything in this. Oh, right. If you want to talk to me outside of this, that's perfectly fine too. But uh, it's just like I said, my my biggest hope is just to bring more. It, the more awareness you can bring to any case like this, the better off it's going to be. So oh that's what yeah. I'm and if there's anybody out there with missing family members, they can always, you know, tag me, you know, at, on Brenda's missing, whatever. They can find me on Facebook and if they want me to share anything or I, I'll usually share in multiple different platforms too. So I'm always here for people who have missing and murdered loved ones. They, I know how they feel, you know. So. Well, yes, ma'am. Well, as soon as we get done with this, I'm going to start piecing everything together. That way we can get it out there for you. But if there's nothing else right now that you need, uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Uh, yes. Honored to work with you on this. And if you mm-hmm. need anything at all, like I said, just feel free to reach out to me at any time, okay? And same way here. All right. Thank you, ma'am.